The Scully Oil Company presents Captain Midnight. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at the same time, by the Scully Oil Company, Scully Jobbers and Dealers. Say, fellas and girls, I've just had the biggest thrill of the season. I've just seen the new burnished bronze medal of membership of Captain Midnight's new 1940 flight patrol. That marvelous medal of membership that I've been telling you about with the thrilling three-blade spinning propeller and the mysterious new secret password. And not only that, but I actually have one of them here in my hand right now. And is it a beauty? Boy, it's still hot almost. It's one of the very first ones finished. I guess I know now what a marvelous thrill you're going to get the first time you see your very own spinning propeller medal of membership. And believe me, you'll get a kick out of owning it and showing it to all your friends. Oh, but say, I want to show you just how this spinning propeller works. Now, I'm going to spin it for you now, right here on the table. Now, listen. There. You hear that? Now, let's see where it stops. Uh Uh-oh, it's pointing straight at me. That means I'm it. Well, (laughs) better luck next time. Say, can't you just imagine the fun you can have with a swell spinning medal? You can play all kinds of swell games with it. You can spin it to decide who's the winner or the loser and dozens of other things. But, of course, the important thing is that this medal of membership entitles you to take part in a thrilling adventure that's ahead for every member of Captain Midnight's 1940 flight patrol. It proves you're a member. And besides, it entitles you to all the other free prizes that are coming. So listen, you better have Mother or Dad drive you over to your Skelly service station tonight. Get your junior pilot's application card right away and have your Skelly man send right in for your spinning propeller medal of membership. Remember, it doesn't cost you a single penny. Just tell your Skelly man you want to join the new 1940 flight patrol and he'll do the rest. And now to Captain Midnight. Ivan Sharp's henchmen have surrounded the lonely cabin where Ma and Patsy Donovan, together with the faithful Slim Cool and Pinky Drake, are waiting for the return of Captain Midnight and Chuck Ramsey. Captain Midnight and Chuck, together with Senor Juan Pereira, escaped from pursuit by one of Shark's planes and landed back in the mountains on the dried bed of a lake. Here, Senor Pereira hopes to round up some of his ranchmen. No sooner had Captain Midnight made a safe landing, however, than the ground proved to be nothing more than a thin crust, through which the landing wheels quickly settled into the muck beneath, flapping the plane. Listen as Chuck cries... The wheels are down to the hubs, Red. Oh, now we'll never fly this ship out of here. Yes, it does look bad, Chuck. It is indeed the unfortunate situation. It is I who have caused it. Oh, no, Senor Pereira, that can't be so. But it is so, El Capitan. It is I who am to blame. My evil star will lead you to no good. Oh, come, Senor. Your terrible experiences have deprived you of all hope. You have said the very true words, El Capitan. There is no hope for me. My daughter is gone. My cattle and lands have been taken away. Leave me, senor, before you lose your lives in attempt to save mine. Such a course would be unthinkable, senor. Chuck and I are here to help you, and we'll do so even if... But let's eliminate every consideration of such a nature. We can't lose unless we lose faith in ourselves and in our cause. Ah, uh, senor, the words that come from your lips give me new courage. I will fight this man who has almost destroyed me. That's the stuff, senor Pareto. We'll wake Ivan Shark yet. Ivan Shark, did you say? Who is he? I will explain, senor. The man who calls himself Douglas Chadwick is an international criminal. His name is really Ivan Shark. So, he is the criminal international. It is hard to believe. Yes, I know it is, senor. But those are the facts. Well, now, come on, let's go. The first thing is, can we pull this ship out? It is hopeless, senor. The airplane is so heavy and sea that more below the crust, it is like quicksand. Yes. Gosh, Red, it sure looks bad. It's settling deeper, little by little. Pretty soon it'll be down over the wheels and resting on the bottom of the fuselage. Swing the pop up a little, Chuck, before the tip gets in that mud there. Okay. You will not be able to fly the airplane. Is that not so? I'm afraid we're going to have a hard time getting the ship into the air, senor. At least not without some help. Could we get the ship off at all, Red? Well, that's something we'd have to determine, Chuck. If we could pull this plane out of the mud, I might be able to take the ship off. Unless this crust gets thinner out toward the middle. But first, how can we pull the plane out? If we can find my men, senor, they will help you. There's an idea, Red. How soon will you know whether your men are around here or not, senor? If they are here, El Capitan, they will gather late in the night. Mm, Very well. Now, here's what we'll do, Chuck. It's now about the middle of the afternoon. Mm -hmm. 3.30 to be exact. Mm -hmm. We'll go over to Senor Pareto's hunting lodge. Then tonight, after darkness sets in, we'll make our way down to the cabin where the others are waiting for us. See, senor, that will be quite possible. You will go up over the mountain to the west and then down the canyon on the other side. As long as you keep in the canyon, you cannot lose the way because the canyon takes you to the cabin. Couldn't we start right away? No, no. That is not the wise thing to do. This Chadwick, Ivan Shark, you call him. 
his manner down that way. In the blackness of the night, you would have the better chance. Gosh, I guess that would be better. And anyway, I could use a little shut eye. Yes, I'll say you can. Your eyes are bloodshot from lack of sleep. So are yours, Red. I guess a little rest would do all of us a lot of good. Don't you think so, Senor Parader? See, si, see. Si. I have not closed the eye for many days, and perhaps you have not also. Uh, come then, Senor. We will go to my haunting lodge in the woods. There we will find the comfortable box. After we have rested, you shall go to your friend, and I shall wait for my man. All right. Come on, Chuck. Let's go. Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Mm-hmm. Come on. Come on, Chuck. Wake up. Oh, gee, Red. Let me sleep. Come on. Come on. Snap out of it, Chuck. Come on. We've got to get up. What? Red? Where are you? I'm right here, Chuck. Come on. Wake up, fella. Oh, gee, Red. Where are we? In Senor Parada's hunting lodge, Chuck. Time for us to go down and see how Ma and Patsy and Slim and Pinky are getting along. Oh, gosh. Oh, I remember now. But for a second, I couldn't think what happened or where I was. Yes, I know, Chuck. I'm sorry to wake you because you need sleep badly. Yeah, you did it just as bad as I do. Gee, Red. Listen. What's that noise? It's the wind and the tree is outside, Chuck. Oh, gosh. I guess that must have come up since I went to sleep. Yes, it just rose about a half an hour ago. I've been lying here listening to it, thinking things over. <laughs> Listen. Senor Parade is still asleep. Yes. Yeah. Poor fellow's absolutely exhausted. And we'll keep quiet then so as not to disturb him. But, gee, Red, what about after we leave? Well, if any of his men come down here, he'll be safe enough for them. And I don't believe any of Shark's cutthroats know about this place. Gee, if he can sleep all night, he would make a new man of it. Well, maybe he'll have that chance. Well, I'm all ready now. Shall we start? Oh, just a second, Chuck. Wait a minute, let me look here. Here, Red, hmm? look at my wristwatch. It has a luminous dial. Oh, yes. Let's see, 7.30. How long do you think it'll take us to get down to that cabin? Well, Senor Parada said it was about seven or eight miles. Yeah. If it's real rough going, it'll take us about four or five hours. No, 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 it won't take us that long, Chuck, because I talked to Senor Parada a little while after you went to sleep. There's an old mountain trail leading down through that canyon. But we'll get started in a few minutes and take our time. If any of Shark's men should be prowling around, they may relax their vigilance by that time of night. Okay. I sure hope nothing's happened to Ma and Patsy and Slim and Pinky. I've got a lot of confidence in Pinky and Slim. Oh, so have I, Red. But they might not be able to hold off a whole gang. Yes, yes, I know that, Chuck. We just have to pray for the best. There's just one thing, Red, that's in our favor. Well, what's that, Chuck? Major Steele and Bud Conley. They should be starting back to help us by early in the morning. I know, Chuck. I was thinking about them a little while ago. Uh, but we can't put all our eggs in one basket. Oh, gosh, what do you mean? I mean just this. We've got to know what we're going to do in case Major Steele and Conley don't come back. Don't come back? What? Well, they wouldn't let us down. No, no, of course they wouldn't. But suppose they don't get to the border. Oh, they'll get there all right. I'm not so sure. Don't forget the gasoline that's in the Spartans' tanks. Oh, sure, I remember. The engine didn't rev up the way it should. And the temperature was getting a little high. But we were still getting by. Yeah, sure, we were getting by for the time being. But what about the tough grind of a long cross-country trip? You said that it was overheating, but you know as well as I do what happens when the motor gets too hot. Gosh, that's right. It might be all right for a little while, but something's going to happen if it stays that way too long. Major Steele is a wonderful pilot, and he'll baby that engine along as much as he can. But after all, Chuck, there's not an awful lot you can do when you've got the wrong kind of gas in your tanks. I guess I don't quite get it, Red. Why should that gas work all right in the engine of the black plane and not in our Spartan? Well, it's very simple, Chuck. Now, uh, these black planes have low compression motors in them and will perform all right with a lower octane gas. But the engine in the Spartan is high compression. Must have a better gas. You mean a higher octane gas? That's right. But, well, well, I guess this sounds kind of foolish to you. But what is the difference between a low-octane and high-octane gas? Well, now, look. I'll give you the whole thing in a nutshell, Chuck. Did you ever throw a stone into the middle of a smooth pool of water? Oh, sure I have. All right. Now, did you notice the ripples? That is, little waves that start and keep moving until they hit against the shore? Of course I have. Now, that is exactly what happens in the firing chamber of a gasoline engine. The splash of the stone in the pool is the same as the firing of the spark in the cylinder head. The time that it takes for those little waves to get to the shore is called lag. Lag? Mm-hmm. You mean like to, to lag behind? Yes, that's it exactly. Now, if the ripples go real fast, there isn't very much lag. And if they go real slow, there's a lot of lag. Now, in high octane gas, which means it has a naturally higher body, the lag is very slow. Oh, I begin to get it. Then, if the lag is slow, which means the vapor takes a long time to burn, there wouldn't be any knock. Mm-hmm. And if the lag isn't slow, if the vapor burns quickly, there's liable to be a knock. Right. That's the whole story. The only other thing to remember is that engines are not all built the same. Certain ones require higher octane gas than others. You should always find out what gasoline will give the best performance in the engine you have. Oh, gosh. I see the whole thing now. But in general, isn't it true that lately the tendency has been toward higher compression engines which require a higher octane gas? That's right, Chuck. That's what the tendency has been. Well, enough of that. Come on, we might as well get started. Okay, I'm all set. Now, look, let's tiptoe out quietly so as not to awaken Senor Parada. Okay, let's go. Yeah, come on. Easy, Chuck. Easy. 
speeding up so fast. Oh, that's your Red. Well, I've got to go very carefully now. I can't understand it, Red. I'm sure the field is right ahead. Well, we should be running into the cabin any second. Quiet now, wait. Let's go up to that next tree there. You know, this wind's a big help. It makes so much noise, it would be hard for anyone to hear it. Yes, and it would be hard for us to hear anyone else. Oh, look, Red, look. There's the cabin. Yes, yes, Chuck, you're right. Come on, let's go. Wait, wait a second, Chuck. Let's be sure no one's watching us. Okay, let's stand absolutely quiet a few seconds. Right. Uh, there's something about this I don't like, Chuck. It's the sound of that wind through the trees, Red. I never heard anything so spooky in all my life. All right. It sort of, well, sort of sends chills down my back. I can't see a sign of anything, Chuck. Well, come on. We're going to make a break for the door. Okay, I'm ready. Now, let's don't make any more noise than we have to. Well, Andy, you go first, and I'll be right behind you. All right, go ahead. Go on. We're almost there. Right. Right around the corner now. Well, here we are. A blazing beacon, Fred. The door's wide open. Stop, Chuck, stop. Don't go in there. Listen, Red. Listen to that. Well, did Captain Midnight have a presentiment of disaster? What is the meaning of the open door? Are Ma and Patsy, together with the faithful miners, Pinky Drake and Slim Pool, still inside? Or is some enemy crouched in the blackness, ready to spring? Strange and mysterious events are ahead. Don't miss them. Tune in next Monday to Captain Midnight. Say, uh, no doubt you'll be out in the family car with Mother and Dad sometime tomorrow or Sunday. And here are two things you'll want to do. First, you'll want to stop by your Skelly service station for a tank full of Skelly Aeromax gasoline. Because Skelly Aeromax is a high-octane gasoline for modern motors, just like Captain Midnight was explaining to Chuck in today's program. And Aeromax Ethyl gasoline is even higher in octane. Your Skelly man will tell you which one is best for your car. Then the other thing you'll want to do is to join the new 1940 flight patrol. Your Skelly Man will give you your junior pilot's application card right away and send right in for your spinning propeller medal of membership. Remember, it doesn't cost you a penny. So see your Skelly Man and join the new 1940 flight patrol tonight. Now don't forget to tune in again Monday, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. What is the significance of the weird cry which rings out over the sobbing of the wind? And what caused Captain Midnight to stop so suddenly? Be sure to listen Monday. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your Skelly Man, saying goodbye and happy landing!